Christian and Satine have a very nice song number where he name checks a bunch of fucking songs that are about love, and we learn that where Christian thinks love is the greatest thing ever, Satine says she cannot fall in love. She is a courtesan, and it is most important to her not to be on the streets. The various songs that Christian chooses for illustrating love are nice, but the danger of using songs that are well known to evoke feeling from the audience is that they could easily backfire if the fucking audience doesn't like the song you bring up. Christian sings part of a goddamn kiss song. Fuck that. Why not have him sing Huey Lewis in the goddamn news? He actually sings a song called The Power of Love. It all works in the end, though, because it's all based on the simple theme of a really simple idea of love. It's that's pretty much it. And they sing Heroes by David Bowie, and David Bowie's really fucking cool. So after the love falling, the Duke acquires the deed to the Moulin Rouge, which makes sense because the Moulin Rouge is boarded up at the beginning of the film. He's the villain. He acts all cartoony evil and stuff, and he gets the deed. But the whole idea as to why he gets it is kind of fuzzy. It seems that Zidler owns the Moulin Rouge, and in order to convert it to a legitimate theater... He has to get the Duke to invest, so Zidler hands over the deeds as collateral. The Duke goes crazy in his office, so Zidler must really, really want to be legitimate. But the story's entire setup at the beginning told us that the rich go there for prostitutes, so why would a legitimate theater make more money? Does he also desperately want to be out of the biz, like Satine? Is, is he doing this for Satine? Zidler basically sells Satine to the Duke in a contract right here, making him a total fucking bastard. He then says some stuff about making the Moulin Rouge a true bohemian place right after selling Satine. So fuck him. Bohemians are assholes. Peace, beauty, truth, and love my ass. So rehearsals begin for Spectacular Spectacular, and Satine and Christian fall in love. They do this behind the Duke's back, as the Duke is being strung along by Zidler and Satine. Lies are best. This is all done in montage. Zidler figures out that Satine and Krishna are sneaking off to make out, and he yells at, at Satine because he sold her. Zidler demands Satine spend some time with the Duke, and, well, fuck yeah, she should. Even, even without being secretly sold or her knowing that, she still is supposed to spend time with him. The arrangement at the beginning of the movie was that she fucks the Duke and he invests. The Duke at this point hasn't told her that he specifically wants sex. He just keeps asking about dinner and lunch and shit, and she keeps unprofessionally sneaking off with Christian. So yes, the Duke may be a bastard, and Zidler is definitely a bastard, but from what the film has presented to Satine, she doesn't know this, and she's being an asshole. <sighs> also, she's a fucking prostitute. I, I think. I Fuck, I don't know. The Duke wants her exclusively as per his contract and the taking of the deed, but the montage indicates that the Moulin Rouge is now a legitimate theater. So is she still even a courtesan? Zidler demands she see the Duke tonight, and Satine is greatly saddened. She then has another coughing spell and faints. Zidler lies to the Duke because Satine doesn't show up, and, and he says she's confessing. And then he explains that she's confessing because she wants to be like a virgin for him, and then the Duke sings like a virgin, and it's really funny, but it's complete fluff to the movie. The film has been really good about having the songs have something to do with the movie, and this one seems really unnecessary, other than it is a distraction for the Duke. But it is really awesome, so whatever. I mean, Satine is out cold and getting closer to death, so, you know, it's fun, fun times. The Duke once again buys into this, you know, even though he's a horrible guy, it really does seem like he's being unfairly manipulated. The movie cuts back to Christian as Special Boy at the beginning, typing out his narration, which he has done from time to time throughout the movie, and he is also narrating at this moment, meaning he is narrating things he did not witness with people he does not really converse with. We are reminded by him that Satine will die, now officially, of consumption. Zidler is saddened, but then says she must not know and the show must go on. So fuck him even more. Christian and Satine have a spat because Christian is jealous and does not believe Satine when she says she was sick. Satine says that they have to end their relationship because everyone knows. Because they've been really fucking stupid about it. Satine lays it out that she has to sleep with the Duke on opening night of the play and that jealousy will drive Christian mad. How she reaches this conclusion is never really explained as she has admitted she, she is incapable of falling in love and he seems like a pretty chipper, easygoing guy. I guess she has seen other men mad with jealousy? Sure. Christian says that he will write them a special song just for them, and he won't get jealous with it. He then sings, I think, the only original song in the film. There might be a couple more later, but I think it is. Which, if you were going to have one original song, this is the proper place to do it. Picking a random pop song that would be their personal song would have been a poor choice for this part of the film. I, 
I, I wrote you this special song. Does she walk? Does she talk? Does she come complete? My homeroom, homeroom angel always glued me to my seat. She was pure like snowflake. She sun never stick. I don't know. It's from fucking Centerfold by the Jay Giles Band. Look it up. It's a really good song. So, so now they have a secret special love song, which they also, for reasons only known to them, insert into the play. This is done mainly so that the play, Spectacular Spectacular, and the film mirror each other, but further point to their own stupidity of poorly hiding their love. It doesn't matter, though, because these decisions don't need logic. It is done to simply and efficiently move the story along. The convoluted plot is important because it is convoluted. It just needs to evoke feeling. Then we see Satine, the Duke, and Christian briefly on a walk. And the Duke playfully chases a frog. And we are reminded that though we, the audience, know that the Duke is a bastard, Satine and Christian do not. Christian even calls the Duke the evil Maharaja when they improvise the play earlier, just to hammer home that the film and the play within are one and the same. But the Duke does nothing wrong in Christian and Satine's presence except own a goofy mustache. He actually seems really nice to Satine, and is even fairly kind to Christian, though he kind of treats him like a servant. It really makes their love affair look really fucking childish. Like I said, though, none of this matters. This is all presented simplistically for the sake of style and visuals and moving the story along. Moulin Rouge is a film of absurdity, and the details are not important. A good comparison for the depth of this film is presented in The Fifth Element, Luc Besson's colorful sci-fi epic. The Fifth Element's plot is glossed over and convoluted, and the film eventually ends on the importance of love, but it's all part of the package, the experience the film is trying to create. Neither film is deep, so much is able to pull you into a weird world of stunning visuals and broad ideas. So they insert their secret song, and we know that the film is heading toward a sad ending, but the film's visual and auditory neatness means that we won't know what's coming. Then, while rehearsing the play, this bitchy prostitute or dancer or actress or whatever totally spells out the secret romance between Satine and Christian to the Duke. Now this is an interesting plot turn to be sure, but it's really fucking random. This lady is featured throughout the film and is given one bitchy line early on about Satine's coughing fit, but still, it's really fucking random. The Duke finally seems to get that Christian and Satine are in love, and that the play he has invested all his money in is mocking him, and that all these people he's paying are assholes. Through what this lady says, which is really obvious, he should see now that, that he's actually funding a play that is all about how much of a jerk he is, and he should be furious at this point. The Duke says he hates the end of the play, and damn straight he does, because at the end, the penniless sitar player and the chick get together, the courtesan, and, and he knows that he's the Maharaja, and he doesn't want that. At least it seems that he knows it. So, so that he, it, it's like an interesting dynamic, but, but he's being really nice, all things considered, it seems. The, the Duke wants the ending changed so that the Maharaja gets the girl, which would make for a really, really shitty play, but, you know, it's it's paralleling the story, and we get what he means through this. Now, now Toulouse the Dwarf, for John Leguizamo or whatever, says that changing the ending doesn't hold to the bohemian ideals of truth, beauty, freedom, and love, and then it hit me that neither does Satine or fucking half the shit that's going on in this, but but Satine specifically. She she lives a lie she could not love, or she she says she can't, she was not free, but she's beautiful, so one out of four. The Duke calls out this hippie bullshit, and, and rightfully so, because damn it, these people have done nothing but lie. Most of them seem marginally talented and are ugly, and all are trapped under the looming threat of the Duke pulling out on this investment, which they all treat him like shit for. It's all very, very convoluted. The Duke demands the ending of the play, and thus the film, to be changed so the Ma that the Maharaja and the courtesan end up together. Also, the secret song must be eliminated. All in all, I think he was rather nice to these hippie motherfuckers. He he's still employing them? So whatever. Satine feigns siding with the Duke to save everyone and promises him his night with her. Christian doesn't want her to sleep with the Duke, but come the fuck on, she was supposed to do that when they first met at the beginning of the movie, and damn it, it seems like he's been patiently waiting for fucking weeks. So now the film takes a sad turn as Satine prepares to sleep with the Duke. I mean, it was fucking hilarious before when she thought Christian was the Duke, but now, because Christian and her are in love, it's sad. And it is! I'm not a heartless bastard, but it's also her job, I think. And this wasn't hidden. What's still hidden is that she is sold to the Duke. And I don't even know if they bring it up. And that she will die. She doesn't fucking know she'll die. Maybe that bitchy dancer prostitute chick can, can ruin that surprise for the Duke. 
Hope she doesn't cough blood all on your doodle. We, we watched fucking solemnly as, as Satine sacrifices herself to the Duke, doing her job. Now everyone is fucking sad at this point, except the Duke. Satine says with a straight face, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. <laughs>